to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. There was a man who lived in the land of Uz, whose name was Job. That man was blameless and upright, one who feared God and shunned evil. Job chapter 1, verse number 1. We welcome you today to our study of the beautiful book of Job. Job has been such an encouragement to so many people who face difficulty and struggles in life, and we're excited today to think about the theme and the message of this wonderful book. And so we're glad that you've joined us for our study of the book of Job. If you don't have your Bible with you, we want to encourage you to take just a moment, get your Bible and have it ready as we prepare to think about from God's Word the beautiful story of Job. Today's lessons are being brought to you by individual Christians and members of the Lord's Church, the Church of Christ in your area. We would love for you to stop by and visit uh, their assembly, whether it be on Sunday morning or maybe Sunday night for Bible study or Wednesday Bible class. You would be an honored guest at any of their services. Maybe you'd like to have a Bible study. You want to learn more about God's plan of salvation or the church or why we do what we do in our worship. Friend, you'll find people at the Lord's Church who'd be happy to sit down and discuss the Scriptures with you, open the Bible, and let God and His Word have the final say. We also want you to know that here at the Gospel of Christ, our aim is simply to help men and women know God and His Word better and ultimately to get to heaven. We'd love to help you in your journey to know God better with our material that we have produced. Just visit our website thegospelofchrist.com. From there, we have a wide array of good Bible study material. We have lessons on every book of the Old and New Testament, as well as a host of topical studies that would be beneficial for your study in the Word of God. And so visit our website, thegospelofchrist.com. You can access all of our media there. If you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson or any of our lessons, fill out our media request form. We can send that to you instantaneously as a digital download, or if you need a DVD or a CD, we'd be happy to put that in the mail to you as well. And don't forget to check out the Gospel of Christ app in both the uh, Play Stores. You can access that there. It's free of charge. It's a great way to get our studies on the go on your smartphone in such a fast-paced world that we live in today. And friend, more than anything, we want people to open their heart, open their Bible to the Word of God, and let God have His way in their life so that they can one day have the hope of heaven. Today we're thinking about Job. And when you think about the story of Job, Job, some of the key ideas that you'll hear are words like suffering, and patience and trial and, and perseverance. We'll also think about the, the sovereignty of God in all affairs. In fact, in James 5.11, James will use Job as an example of patience and perseverance and how that if people stick in there, you can consider the end of Job, how it was so much better in the end than it was in the beginning. Several key verses are linked to the idea of suffering as well. You've got Job chapter 1, verse 9, where Satan, in essence, says to Job, uh, to God, Job serves you because of everything you blessed him with. And then Job will later say, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Job chapter 13, verse number 15. We've got verses in the book of Job that remind us of his integrity. Job chapter 1, verse 1, there, no man living like Job in the world that we know of, blameless, upright, one who feared God and shunned evil. Even when Satan worked everything against Job, Job kept his integrity and did not curse God, but rather said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, naked shall I return. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You know, probably one of the key phrases 
that we find in this book. And it really tells us about the heart of Job. Is Job 13 verse 15. Job says this, Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. You know, everything was taken away from Job. His family, his wealth, his health, everything that he had. And although it looked like God was assailing him, he still put his trust in the Almighty. Key chapters then will be chapter 1 and chapter 42. Job goes from major crisis to ultimate being blessed by God in the end because of his faith, because he did not give up on Almighty God. You know, the book of Job, so many people have held it as a, one of the greatest master, uh, liter, masterpiece of literature in the world. I believe it was Victor Hugo who said, Tomorrow, if all literature was to be destroyed and it was left to me to retain one work only, I should save Job. Daniel Webster had this to say about the book of Job. He said, The book of Job, taken as a mere work of literary genius, is one of the most wonderful productions of any age or any language. And the scholar Philip Schaff said, The book of Job rises like a pyramid in the history of literature without a predecessor and without a rival. Friend, to so many people in this life who face sickness, death, disease and calamity. Job has reminded them, no matter what you face, if you'll put your trust in God, all can work out well. Many people think the main message of Job is just to deal with suffering. And while that's true, Job's suffering is only a cause of the real thing. You know, if the theme of Job is suffering, it's never actually told why. Job is suffering. God completely ignores this in his speech pretty much. And secondly, to deal with Job's suffering, we learn tidbits about it. But again, this is not the main idea. The main idea of Job is this. God, Satan asked the question, will a man serve God for nothing? Satan's accusation against God and against Job is this. People only serve you for what they can get out of it. Here's what he says in chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. Concerning this person, Job, you've mentioned to me, Satan says, have you not put a hedge around him and his house and all that he has on every side? You've blessed the work of his hand and his possessions have increased in the land. In essence, Satan says, does Job fear God for nothing? That's the key question to the book. Will we serve God? just because he's God? Or are we serving God for the benefits that we get? What's the motive that men and women serve God for? Why does Job serve you? It's only because you have hedged him with blessing. And God says, no, that's not the case. Take it all away. Remove it. Take every blessing, every benefit, even to the point of taking his health. Don't take his life, God said, but you can do anything else you want to go to Job and he'll st still serve me. And friend, that's the major premise that we find throughout the book. Is righteousness apart from blessings possible? Will people, in other words, if all blessings were removed, would a person serve God just because it's the right thing to do? Will we serve God just because he is God. Job is kind of like what we might think of as a divine debate. The proposition is men will only serve God for what they get out of it. Satan affirms this, God denies it, and the first and only argument is Job himself, and Job is proof positive. People will do the right thing and serve God just because he is God. You see, Satan's affirmation is God's policy of blessing the righteous is counterproductive to the development of true righteousness. Blessings induce people to be righteous for what they stand to gain from it. God's policies are here placed on trial, not Job, and Job is a proof that God's policies are indeed just and right. And so as we think about the message of Job, if God is going to prove that Job will serve him regardless of the blessings, what will he have to do? 
He'll have to allow Satan to take them away. This is why suffering is a cause of the real theme of disinterested righteousness. If men have nothing to gain from it, will they still be righteous and serve God because it's the right thing? And friend, the answer, of course, is absolutely. Job, he indeed did face a lot of hardship and a lot of suffering in this life. When you think about the plot of Job as it unfolds, in Job chapter 1, you've got Job who is one of the greatest men living at his time. Satan approaches God. God says, where have you come from? To and fro, back and forth on the earth. Have you considered my servant Job? And then the problems begin to arise. Job's family, all of his children are killed. Job loses every wealth and blessing that he has, his land, his servants, his flocks, the worst Black Monday you could ever think of. Job had it. So he loses all of his children. They die. He loses all of his wealth and blessings. And on top of that, Job loses his health. He gets something of a disease. We don't know exactly what it was, but it's reminiscent of what we think of as leprosy. And Job, for for, for comfort, sits in the ash pit and scrapes the dead skin off of his body. He suffers sleeplessness, painful boils from head to toe. Uh, chapter 7, verse 5, he has rat rotten, cracked, and pus-infected skin. He has rottenness in his bones. I mean, over difficulty eating and sleeping, you see that throughout the book. Over and over again, Job suffers like no man has ever suffered only to prove he will serve God just because it's the right thing to do. And ultimately, we know by reading the book that Job did not give up on Almighty God. Let's then think about, in the remainder of our time, let's think about some of the powerful teachings that we learn from the book of Job and how those can help us to be better servants of God. I want you to turn to Job chapter 1, and I want you to look at this powerful lesson. Men must serve God regardless of how difficult life may be. Look in Job chapter 1. Would you look with me in verses 20 and 21? After all this happened to Job, the Bible says, Then Job arose tore his robe, shaved his head, and he fell to the ground and worshiped, and he said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return there. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And all this Job did not sin, nor charge God with wrong. Look in chapter 2, verse number 10. After Job's wife encourages him to curse God and die, Job says, You speak as one of the foolish women speaks. Shall we indeed accept from good from God, and shall we not accept adversity? In all this, Job did not sin with his lips. You know, when you think of what Job went through, can you imagine getting the phone call that all your children have died at once? Can you imagine Someone come running to you, multiple after multiple people run. Everything you own has been lost just like that. And then on top of that, you get such a dreaded disease that, that life is miserable and you wish you were dead. That's where Job was. Job said this, Naked I came from my mother's womb, naked shall I return there. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Job fell down and worshiped God in the midst of all these problems. Friend, we've got to remember that, that although we may face challenges, although suffering and difficulty may come our way, we need to remember God is the one who is worthy of our worship, that we came into life with nothing, we're going to leave with it, and that above all, Putting our hope and trust in God is the major thing. All right, a second lesson from the book of Job. I want you to look in Job chapter 14, and Job reminds us of the brevity of life. Look at Job chapter 14, verse number 1 with me. Look at what the scripture here says. Job puts it in very simple language. Man who is born of woman is of few days and full of trouble. Life is brief. All of us 
realize that we're not going to live forever, right? Hebrews 9, 27 says, It is appointed to man once to die, and then the judgment. Life is brief. We're not going to live here forever. At best, 70, maybe 80 years upon this earth. Do you remember James 4, verse 14? What is your life? It is but a vapor that appears for a little while, then it vanishes away. Man who's born of woman, everybody basically, few days and full of trouble. There are going to be difficulties in life is indeed few days. 2 Samuel 14, verse 14, there's but a step between me and death. Life is like a, a breath or a sigh. Psalm 144, verse number 4. And so when I think about practical lessons from the book of Job, friend, I've got to be reminded, nobody ever promised me I would have a long time on this earth. We've not been promised that we will live forever. In fact, we've been taught life is very brief, this is our one opportunity, our one chance to serve God. What else do we learn from the book of Job? Although life is very brief, Job hints at the idea of life beyond the grave. Look at the question of Job 14, verse 14. If a man dies, shall he live again? All the days of my hard service, Job says, I will wait till my change comes. And so when I think about Job, Job had some kind of a idea, it seems like, that there was life beyond this one. If a man dies, will he live again? You know, really in the Old Testament, although we see some glimpses and some pictures of that, with clarity, we are not taught about that until Jesus comes on the scene. And Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, he'll never really die. Sheol, the grave, could not contain the Savior. Christ with victory. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 57 defeated death and the Hadean realm. And as a result, the second death has no power over the child of God. Revelation 20 verses 12 through 15. And so we believe that one day all are in the grave will come forth. Those who have done good to the resurrection of life, those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. John chapter 5, verse 28 and 29. And so how wonderful it is we hear that although life is brief, life exists beyond this life. If I live true to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, if I remain faithful to His teaching, Jesus says, be faithful unto death. I'll give you the crown of life. Jesus says the righteous will go away into everlasting life. Revelation 2 verse 10, Matthew chapter 25 verse number 46. All right, a third lesson. Job also speaks about the great Redeemer who is to come. Look in Job chapter 19 verse number 25 with me. Job is pleading for someone to stand and redeem his case. And look what he says. In Job 19, verse 25, For I know that my Redeemer lives, and He shall stand at last on the earth. This idea in the Old Testament of the Redeemer, the Goel, was someone who would stand and plead their case and give a defense and, and uh, vindicate kind of the idea. But isn't that a beautiful phrase? And our, our song is based on that. I know that my Redeemer lives. He shall stand at last on the earth. Who is that? Well, friend, the ultimate Redeemer, the ultimate one to plead our case and vindicate us is the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He has redeemed us by His blood. Ephesians 1 verse 7, Colossians 1 verse 13. He has purchased our redemption with His sacrifice. Matthew 26 verse 28. He is that, that great Redeemer. You'll call His name Jesus. He'll save His people from their sins. Matthew chapter 1 verses 19 through 21. Well, what else do we learn from the book of Job? I want you to open with me to Job chapter 23 verse number 12 and here we learn one of the things that kept Job going in the midst of his difficulty. Look in Job 23 verse number 12. Notice what the scripture here says. Job says, 
I have not departed from the commandment of his lips. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Job faced so much, so much heartache, so much difficulty, so much sickness and disease. How did Job stay true? Job said this, I've treasured his words. I've treasured the words of his mouth, God's mouth, more than my necessary food. Friend, do we realize just how valuable God's Word is to us remaining true and remaining faithful and being what God wants us to be? Think about these words with me. In Matthew chapter 4, Jesus is tempted by Satan. Uh, if you're the Son of God, command these stones to become bread. Now, you've got to remember, Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days. He was there without food. He was very, it, no doubt he would be hungry. If you're the son, you're hungry. If you're the son of God and you say you have the power, you have the power you say you have, just turn these stones to bread and eat it. Here's what Jesus said. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Matthew 5 verse 6 says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Your words were found, and I did eat them, and they were to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. Jeremiah said in Jeremiah 15 verse 16, and so like Job, more important than our necessary food, more important than three meals a day that you've got to have, uh, you, the food you've got to have to survive physically, is God's Word. I've treasured the words of His mouth more than my necessary food. All right, let's then think about a couple of other really practical lessons from the book of Job. I want you to see with me, I want you to see the aggressive, militant nature of our enemy. Turn back to Job chapter 1, and I want you to see how the enemy is after Job and how he's after every one of us. Look in Job chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. The Bible says, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, From where do you come? So Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth, from walking back and forth on it. Well, what was he doing there? Look at verse 8. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil? Friend, what was Satan doing down on the earth, going to and fro, walking back and forth? He was actively, aggressively looking for people to tempt. Friend, that same idea is so true today. He's that raging lion. Seeking, roaring, raging lions, seeking whom he may devour. 1 Peter 5, 8. Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, Simon, Jesus, uh, Jesus, Satan desires to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I've prayed for you. And friend, I promise you, where Simon's name is, you can put yours. Satan desires to have us that he may sift us like wheat. Don't ever underestimate the aggressive, militant nature of the enemy we face. Although he has ultimately been defeated, Hebrews 2 verses 9 through 14, we've got the fight, the good fight of faith every day. Ephesians 6 verses 10 through 17. All right, the final idea, and this is the one that is kind of the climax of the book of Job. Will a man serve God for nothing? Job does that. He asks questions. He doesn't always understand what's going on. But through this, Job proves people will serve God just because he's God. How did it work out in the end for Job? How will it work out for me and you if we serve God just because he's God? Open your Bible and turn to Job chapter 42. And I want us to read the last few pages, the last few words in the book of Job. And I want you to hear what God says about Job. Look in Job chapter 42. And I want you to look beginning in verse number 12. That's Job 42, verse number 12. Now the Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning. 
for he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, 1,000 female donkeys. He also had seven sons and three daughters. He called the name of his first, Jemimiah, the name of the second, Keziah, the name of the third, Karen Hapich. In all the land were found no women so beautiful as the daughters of Job, and their father gave them an inheritance among their brothers. After this, Job lived 140 years, saw his children and grandchildren for four generations. So Job died old and full of days. You know, at one point, it looks like Job's on the pericope of death. It looks like he's about to leave this life in a sad, pitiful, depressed state. And yet, Job doesn't give up. Doesn't mean he didn't have questions. Doesn't mean he wasn't sometimes confused by what was going on. But Job never, ever gave up on God. Friend, that's the encouragement that the book of Job offers us today. When I became a Christian, I committed my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. I was never promised everything's going to be easy. I was never promised that there wouldn't be challenges and difficulties along the way. Here is what I was promised. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 13 tells us that although there may be difficult, God is faithful, who with the temptation will also make the way of escape that we may be able to bear it. God promises I can endure what I've got to face, that I can handle it, and that I don't have to give up when trouble and difficulty comes my way. And so, friend, if you're not a Christian, surely the book of Job impresses upon our hearts just how much we need God, especially in times of difficulty. Maybe you're going through some difficulty. Maybe you're dealing with some death or disease or, or sickness or heartache or sin. Friend, you need God's help desperately. The only way Job made it is because he continued to trust in God. And that's the encouragement we receive. We hope that you'll continue to study with us in our series of lessons as we're going to look next time at more from the Word of God. And again, we're so glad you joined us today. Join us next time as we study more from God's divine Word. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ with its whole aim to take the Gospel to the whole world. We do that through TV, internet, free media, and streaming. Our motto truly is to take the whole gospel to the whole world, and we believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious programs today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844 844- Six Gospel. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the